President Buhari today is giving a self-appraiser of the fight against insurgency for speaking on the situation of security in the country today in Kaduna. And tonight we analyze the screening of INEC Rex and some of the controversies over the petitions raised by some Nigerians. Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Baloy in Abuja. Tonight we begin by letting you know some of the news perhaps um, something that uh, really being a talking point uh, within the Nigerian political space over the last few days since the presidential candidate of the APC, Bola Tunubu, traveled out of the country. From what we gathered, the presidential candidate of the APC, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, has returned to Nigeria. He arrived at the Abuja airport earlier this evening after days of being away to London. Some of his aides and uh, some APC members have taken to social media to announce the arrival of the, the party leader and the presidential flag bearer, whose absence uh, from the country in the past days has generated controversies and questions raised as to his state of health and whereabouts. Just yesterday on the program, the spokesperson of the presidential campaign council, Festus Kiyama, was speaking to us about the whereabouts of uh, its principal now that uh, we now have some of the images that you're seeing on your screen showing how he's arrived into the country. Well, President Mohamed Buhari was in Kaduna State today. Has been, he's been recounting the ordeal of fighting insurgency in the country. And um, since taking over the presidency over seven years ago, the president has been talking about what it means to tackle what has become a hydra-headed uh, disease fighting, confronting the nation. The president says that he inherited a country at crossroads with bums detonating in cities across Nigeria when he assumed office in 2000. And 15, however, said his government has been able to manage Nigeria's security crises in the last seven years. He said this today in Africa, Kaduna State, at the personal parade and commissioning ceremony of cadets of regular Corps 69 of the Nigerian Defense Academy. Take a listen to the president. It is imperative to identify the magnitude and complex states of conflicts surrounding us, while acknowledging that our measures have yielded results and we remain ever grateful for the sacrifices of members of the armed forces, we must brace up for the dimensions this conflict has taken. In our bid to fulfill our promise to neutralize Boko Haram, terrorism in the Northeast, which has spread to other neighboring countries. When we look over, the armed forces liberated areas occupied by the terrorists and gave the residents a new lease of life. And our commitment to resettling and rehabilitating the victims of the tragedy has been unwavering. I want to seize this opportunity to appeal to Nigerians that although we have recorded success in the conflict inherited, especially in the Northeast, the security challenges in the country have evolved and assumed other dimensions in some areas. Well, after that event, which is a passing uh, out parade of the cadets, the president met with the passengers of uh, the Abuja Kaduna train who uh, attacked who recently regained their freedom yesterday from captivity. 23 of the remaining victims of the abduction regained their freedom 
yesterday on the 28th of March, an attack on a train on its way to Kaduna from Abuja resulted in killings, injuries, and abductions. A total of 61 persons were said to have been kidnapped during the attack. The abductees have been released in piecemeal at various intervals, including 11 who were freed in June, 7 in July, and 12 persons in August, and the last batch, uh, the 23 remaining, who were released yesterday. So tonight, there is a rave in town. Perhaps what some people have uh, dogged as uh, a possible upset within the political space. The coming of the Labour Party. Not as though the party is new in, uh, in Nigeria's politics, but it does look like there is a, a candidate that come into that party and perhaps is con generating the kind of buzz that the party is experiencing um, ahead of the 2023 elections. There is one man that has been very vocal about the Labour Party, the chances of the candidate Peter Obi, and what has become a very major conversation around the obedient movement. He's my guest tonight on the program. Before we get into the matter of the controversies relating to the screening and confirmation of some of the INEC wrecks, which the Senate affirmed yesterday. We got into all of that. Stay with me, everyone. But first and foremost, let me bring you up to speed with some of the political stories that you need to know now. Governor Debuye Gawayetala of Washington State has appealed to the Federal High Court's judgment that nullified his nomination as the candidate of the All Progressives Congress for the July 16, 2022 governorship election in the state. Versus as the governor and his deputy have also filed an application before the Federal High Court in Abuja seeking to stay execution of the court's judgment pending the final determination of the appeal. Justice Emeka Witte of the Federal High Court Abuja had while delivering ruling in a suit filed by the People's Democratic Party, invalidated the candidacy of Ayatollah and his deputy Benedict Alabi on the grounds that Governor May Malabuni of Yobe State, who submitted their names to the Independent National Electoral Commission, violated the provisions of Section 183 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and Section 82, Subsection 3 of the Electoral Act 2022. A civil society group, Yaga Africa, is calling for increased participation of youths and women for elective positions in the country. The executive director of the organization, Mr. Samson Itodo, stated this in Abuja while presenting a preliminary report on youth candidates taking part in the 2023 general election. According to the report, only 28% of the youth of the Nigerian population are participating in the elections, as against 34% recorded in 2019. There is a decline in youth candidacy from 34% in 2019 elections to 28.6% in the 2023 election. The River State House of Assembly has passed a motion to de-recognize Celestino Mehe as former governor of the state. A motion by the leader of the House, Martin Amehuli, also asked Mr. Mehe to refund nearly 700 million naira, which he has received as benefits and pension, and stop using the title His Excellency and that of a state honor that was bestowed on him while he was being recognized as a former governor. The lawmaker who moved the motion argued that it was important that the House reverses the resolution of the 8th Assembly in June 2015 because the new assembly has better knowledge and particulars of the Supreme Court's judgment which removed Omehia from office and installed Rotimi Amechi as the governor in 2007. What we are doing to state it in all material terms we are in order. We are not out of order. The governor of Gombe State, Inuwa Yahaya, has sworn in Justice Halima Sadia Mohammed as acting chief judge of the state. In a brief ceremony at the government house in Gombe, Governor Yahaya charged a new acting chief judge. Governor Yahaya charged a new acting chief judge to consolidate on the successes of her predecessor, Justice Sadia, and bring reforms to the state judiciary with the use of digital justice administration. I have no doubt that the new chief judge has the requisite expertise, integrity courage and experience to oversee the Gombe State Judiciary. A human rights lawyer and labor activist, Mr. Femi Aborishade, is asking the Nigeria Labor Congress to declare a nationwide solidarity strike in support of ASU that has been on strike for almost eight months now. Mr. Aborishade made the call at the Nigeria Labor Congress roundtable on decent work day in Abuja. Meanwhile, the president of the NLC, Mr. Ayuba Waba, is calling for increased wages for workers, insisting that the value of the current 30,000 naira minimum wage has been eroded by inflation. Courage, Nigeria Labor Congress to reconsider 
that option of declaring solidarity strike action in support of ASU, the victory of ASU. A lot of bread, comrades, in Abuja that used to be 400, 350. It's now 1,000 naira. As Nigerians prepare for the 2023 general election, a rights group is asking eligible voters across the nation to ensure that they change the narrative which has kept the nation on a standstill by ensuring that they exercise their franchise in a lawful manner. The coordinator of the group, Ibukuntumbi, who was speaking in Calabar, the Cross River State Capital, explained that the exercise tagged, I pledge to vote, is aimed at educating the youths on the benefit of voting right in the 2023 general election. I'll try to encourage each and every one of us to please go and get our PVCs because without the PVC, we cannot vote. We further take this campaign to see that um, on the day of elections, on the elections day, we have youths come out to cast their vote. Thank you so much, everyone. There you go. You've been served with your political roundup stories. Now, let's get talking, everyone. Um, the campaign has started, yes. There is a lot of buzz, and the political parties are talking. 18 of them, one of them will get the mandate to rule this country as a political party and as a candidate. Who will that be? The election is February 25th, 2023. There's a lot there are people who are talking about. But tonight, let's focus on the Labour Party and the obedient movement, something that caught the political, the Nigerian political space uh, by some storm. I'm being joined tonight by an actor, a lawyer, and a former member of the APC who has since moved to the Labour Party, Dr. Kenneth Okonkwo. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure being here. Thank you, viewers at home. You abandoned the APC. What, what was it that was so bad that you had to jump ship? Everything about APC is bad. Really? Yes. Because there is no sound coming out of APC. What you hear is noise. And do you know, when people make noise, they exchange ignorance through argument. I was in APC. And reading their manifesto, reading their constitution, which their leaders are not aware of. They don't know the contents of their manifesto. Because by their manifesto, they talked about restructuring. By their manifesto, they talked about true federalism. And then the promises they made Nigeria, one naira should be equal to one dollar. Today, a dollar is 735 naira. You know what it means? Market. Good. Of course, the parallel market is the street market. You know what that means? It means that APC has failed 735% of the time from what they promised. So their deviation is unpardonable. And to begin to rub it in, I did not subscribe to the fact that ASU would be at home, students at home, my younger ones, denied education for seven months, and there is no end in sight. That was not the reason I entered APC. When I entered APC, they promised me they were going to tackle security. After the failure of PDP, give it to PDP. They failed. They acknowledged. They apologized. APC came pretending that they are going to build on what PDP did. And yes, they are building a skyscraper of failure on it. Because the security that was limited to Northeast has metastasized and has swept all over Nigeria. In the Southeast, you talk of the unknown gunmen. In the North Central, you talk about the headsmen. In the Northwest, you talk about bandits, kidnappers, terrorists. In the South South, you talk about the oil thieves. In the Northeast, Boko Haram is still laying ambush, liquidating our military officers and the people in Northeast. So they have not done anything. In the issue of corruption, one person who is supposed to be the custodian of the money of Nigeria is alleged to have stolen 109 billion naira, the provable one. You can imagine in APC government, we are witnessing termites eating documents, monkeys swallowing money, snakes becoming money eaters. In APC government, I did not vote for animals to begin to manifest as witches stealing our money. So in APC government, Everybody has become a thief, including animals. Please, we need.
need the redemption. APC, the name of APC, gives me so much trauma that I would want to talk about APC Are as you meaning. Mm. Let me, let me not say it so that you you, know. you 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 didn't see all of this before you joined the APC. I joined APC December 16th, December 30th, 2016, when Boko Haram was allegedly technically defeated. When I joined APC, it was actually moving at the right direction. That was just like one year or two after they had finished the 2015 election. And when I read their manifesto, when I read their constitution, these were the lofty aims that I, I saw. The one that really touched me, they said, providing selfless service to the nation that will engender prosperity, stopping discrimination at every level, this, that, this, that. I stayed there till after 2019 election, when the new government came in, and I saw the direction they were going to. If you have been reading my column, you discover that I have been in APC, but I have been abhorring everything they have been doing. Well, perhaps for those who will say, uh, those no. who have been following you also, you wanted to be governor in Enugu State. Yes. Perhaps the reason why you didn't get a ticket and uh, maybe the reason why you're speaking like this. This is some of what your critics are saying, that that's the reason why you left the APC before, because you couldn't achieve your aim and perhaps could it also be the reason why you are aggrieved at the party that you formerly belong? Good. That question is beautiful. Let me first of all admit that I nourished the ambition to be the governor of Enugu State. Whoever is in politics can no longer pretend he's not interested in power. It depends on what you want to do when you get the power. When I was in APC, when they brought the obnoxious fee for people to pay as governors, to become governors. A fee that the president said he cannot afford. A fee that the governor of Kaduna State, Erufai, said he cannot afford. And they want me to use my money that I'm using for my business to go and pay for such a fee, which I have been unilaterally, continually building APC in Enugu State. APC was non-existent in Enugu State when I came in, when I wanted to do that, I told people, I said it is to give me the impetus that I should campaign for President Buhari, and they are aware of it. So when they brought that prize, I told them, if you're not going to pay this prize, I am not interested. I raised the secretariat for APC in my local government single-handedly. I raised it in my word single-handedly. And when they wanted to do this registration, new members, I still give them something in the neighborhood of seven figures. So when you talk about money, I believe that I prefer to do the right thing and lose rather than doing the wrong thing and winning. And I got this from P2B in one of the things he's saying later, which explains where I was. If I had that money and I wouldn't tell you whether I do or not, I wouldn't invest it to buy the ticket of a party where the cumulative salary of the governor does not amount to that in four years. Whoever is in APC who takes that kind of money in the nomination fee is corrupt and cannot make it through the genuine earning of being a governor or being a president. Now so they're saying 100 million, mm -hmm. telling you that they are increasing in impunity of wrongdoing. I, I, I will quickly come to the Labour Party and some of the issues, but you touched on a few issues which I'd like you to uh, comment on. The president said it came into power uh, where uh, security was a major problem. And today he said he's done his best to fix the problem of security in this country. If I knew that innocent citizens will be taken away from train, which the president told them it was safe to ride on, and will be in captivity for eight months. You and I know that I would not follow that president. And he's rejoicing, he has done great things. United States of America came to Niger State to pick their citizen that the terrorists put in their camp, United States mm. and Nigeria took eight months, about eight months, and they are rejoicing 
after buying those people. You know, in this government, APC's government, they have made people to become slaves because they buy them. The terrorists will kidnap them and they will go and pay ransom. That is buying and selling of human beings. You are meant to rescue people. The terrorists are not meant to release them. And they are negotiating, paying billions of naira to buy back their citizens. Not in foreign countries. So you don't agree with what right the president on, said? That what? That is, I'm is, embarrassed is, is, is that he's what? rejoicing after people have languished in jail, in, 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 in the terrorist camp for more than eight months, burrowing like animals. And he's rejoicing if, you think that he has done something. The I'm man you're supporting today, you think he has a solution to, to do better than the president of the day has done? Look at his history. First of all, if you would allow me, let me give you the seven-point agenda that he has said he was going to do. That is Peter Obi. he's going to be, yes, Peter Obi. Does one. he have a manifesto yet? Oh, thank you for that question. Because I am not going to be sold again to worthless political manifesto. A friend of mine, he's from Jigawa State. Before now, he has been very reluctant when I'm telling him that there is a need for us to think twice about Nigeria. Then the last time he read what I wrote, he responded positively to it. And I was wondering, what changed? He said, look, let's be realistic. We have issues in this country. I am traveling now from Mecca to Medina, riding on a train that is moving at 300 kilometers per hour. He said, 40 years ago, this was a rural community. But the leaders of this country have put infrastructure and have transformed this city to a mega city. He said, look, that what we need now is not partisan political parties, but that the citizens of Nigeria should come up with a blueprint, not worthless political manifestos. I have been deceived by manifestos before. What I want from the candidates, let them come and sit here and let Shewun Okibaloye ask them questions on what they want to do for Nigeria and let Nigerians cross-examine them in law. You don't just do examination in chief and go. These people don't have no manifesto. Atiku, Tinubu, they have no manifesto. What they have is a document written by some brilliant professors, which I can tell you, they do not know the contents of it. Because, let me forget that one. So, this my friend, he said, look, that we have shameless kleptomaniacs governing us. Nigerians, the interest you are better off 40 years ago than they are today. 40 years ago, 85 Kobo is, was equal to $1. 40 years ago, I drive alone. I can drive alone throughout the streets of Nigeria, and nothing will happen to me. 40 years ago, we were exporting refined crude outside. Our problem 40 years ago was not money, but how to spend it. Today, the present government cannot even have revenue enough to service the debts that it ill-advisedly took for himself. Let me tell you about P2B's seven-point agenda. One, securing and uniting Nigeria. Two, effective legal and institutional reforms. Three, production-centered growth for food security. Four, leapfrogging Nigeria out of oil dependency to the fourth industrial revolution. Five, human capital development for effective competitiveness. Six, expanding physical infrastructure through market-driven reforms. Seven, robust foreign policy that will restore Nigerians' strategic relevance in international community. In all these things, they are the things he did and he had done as the governor of Anambra State. Recall, when he was in Anambra State, security was so, insecurity was so removed that the IG of police then Mohammed said within five years of OB regime, no successful bank robbery took place. None. It's on record. The kidnapper, Evans, ran away from an armed state. And he said OB security tactic chased him away. OB was the first person who started demolishing any home that is owned by kidnappers. And you know what? He said he is going to implement this thing through three-level policing, federal, state, and community. 
He is the community vigilante. He was one of the governors that did it. Obi inherited via Chiu, the first governor of Anambra State PDP. He was the only governor in PDP that was not returned because of his Mala administration. Chiu Kemba didn't do. So, um, Gige had a stopgap. And after that, Obi came in. So he inherited terrible Anambra State that was coming last in Wayak through human capital development. Within two years, Anambra State started coming first in Wayak. So can you imagine? We have the APC that inherited foreign currency, and they are now coming last in the world. I said they have failed us 735% of the time. Then Obi inherited an educational system that was last and catapulted it to second, so, to first, yeah. within two, three years. No, 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 I, I, now, I, I, and I'd like to ask you this. So those who will question, uh, because uh, the capacity of Mr. Peter Obi, if you put him on the same pedestal yes. uh, with some of his opponents or some of his fellow contestants, uh, in the race, for example, um, you look at at least three or four of them that have been former governors of their states. Um, uh, Robbie Musokunkunso was a former governor of Kano State. Bola Tinubu, a former governor of Lagos State. Uh, Peter Obi, a former governor of Anambra State. Uh, Atiku Abubakar was elected, but became a vice president uh, eventually. So they, they talk about their profile, their track record, when uh, there were governors and those who will say, oh, Peter Obi that you're talking about under him, uh, you talk about education system in Nigeria, under him there was a, a, a strike and on ending for about 13 months or thereabout. These are question marks that have been raised about the capacity of Mr. Peter Obi. And to think that those who have argued also that, look, a state, governing a state is a different kettle of fish entirely to handling a very complex Nigeria. Very good. I am going to talk about this, just citing what other people have said. The spokesperson of APC came here and he told you, P2B is better than Atiku. And the reason is because P2B was in a position to take executive decisions and Atiku has never been. So that's settled. When you talk about Tinubu, you just say former governor. He has not held any other post except former governor. Good. He was there for eight years. PW was governor for eight years. So when you talk about capacity to be very respectful to these gentlemen, they are men of desperation. They are not men of destination. At 80 years, what can they offer? You cannot force a disunited party on a disunited country to For collapse. those who think that Peter Obi belonged to that same political class of... He was a former PDP. Now he left. I mean, how would you say, how would you define Peter Obi yeah. if you say, uh, would you say that Peter Obi is a different, cut from the different cloth? All right. Because he was a former PDP member okay. now and you've criticized PDP. Very good. I wish you were sitting here and I'm sitting here and I'll ask you some very tough questions. When he was in PDP, did he, by any means, occupy any executive position for which he took any decision? None. I was in PDP, entered APC, and I'm in level. He was the governor of Anambra State, APGA. He entrenched APGA so much in Anambra State through good governance that even he himself could no longer uproot APGA. You can imagine that level of good governance. That Anambra State became sentimentally attached to APGA because of the foundation of governance that Peter Obi built. Do you know from the mouth of Atiku Abubakar, you know what he said? Atiku Abubakar said, the reason he told Obasanjo, Chingo Kemba Dinuju will never come back is that school were at home for two years. These are the kind of things will be inherited a completely messed up system. So what you said, if there was any strike, is it anything close to two years? That tells you progression towards the better from the foundation of what he inherited. So you think Peter B is better than the, the rest? Peter B by three opinion polls. It's not just that it's better, but that he is the only option.
So it is wrong to say that P2B is an alternative option. No, mm -hmm. it's the of, only option. Some of your friends in Nollywood yes. don't think so. Yes. They've thrown their weight behind uh, Balatinobu. You just said Nollywood. You just said Nollywood. I'm not aware many of them are politicians. So they are entitled to visit anybody and collect the appearance, appearance fee. I am here talking as a politician, not as a Nollywood practitioner. An actor is entitled to his appearance fee. And if you call him as an actor, you have to pay him. If I was invited as an actor, if I'm not a politician, I would tell you what you will pay as appearance fee. And so let us forget them. When they say they're politicians, you see them here and you ask them questions. Let us know the reason why they are following any candidate. On a final note, and in perhaps 30 seconds if you can deal, um, for those who have analyzed, because there are a lot of permutations are going on, then what... At best, what Peter will be will get is to decimate the votes of Atiku Abubakar uh, and his ability to able to penetrate some very stronghold, political stronghold in this country has been questioned. I mean, you've been in politics. What gives you the confidence that Peter will be can have a penetration that can win him the presidency of Nigeria? First of all, Atiku Abubakar. I wonder whether he is still contesting because if he's, a, a, if he's an honorable man, he would have stepped down. The only manifesto he had coming into this election is that he's a great unifier because that's the one that came out of him. I've told you I'm not interested in worthless political manifestos. What is, it, what is happening in PDP? The entire South has been cut off from PDP. Presidential candidate, North. DG campaign, North. National chairman, North. BOT chairman, North. And when the South cried, you know what they did? They gave them acting BOT chairman. I'm not saying BOT chairman. I said acting BOT chairman. And those people that cry, they were told that they are children that should be sucking their mother's breast and not talking about giving important position in PDP. A great disuniter who has come claiming he's a uniter. The first manifesto, he failed. You've all told me how Peter Obi can get the ticket. I no. mean, can win the election. Yes. With, because we are totally me, out of time. Good. Let me tell you how he has already won the election. All these matches that are going on, on October 1st, they simultaneously went on throughout almost all the Federation. In Lagos, there were five different places. I want to tell you those people matching our votes because nobody told them to come out. And that's the structure they say you don't have. Oh, Is it? I'm asking. Now, NLC, TUC have thrown all their weight behind Pitobi. Is there any local government, any word that you don't have labor present? And they are talking about structure. All right. So what I'm saying is that OB is the only option. Mm. There is no other option. We need to leave it at that. Thank you so much, Dr. Kenneth Okunko, for coming tonight. A lawyer, a actor, and a member of the Labour Party. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. We take a break, everyone. And when we return, our attention will be on the screening of INEC Rex in 19 states of the Federation. And the controversy is there to be raised based on the petition sent to the Senate. So with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. The Senate on Wednesday that yesterday confirmed the nomination of 19 resident electoral commissioners for the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. It also confirmed the nomination of Mohamed Sabo Lamido as Executive Commissioner of Finance and Accounts for the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Agency, NUPRA. Uh, well, that's... What concerns us is not the latter, is the former. The co confirmation of the 19 resident electoral commissioners by INEC. If you remember, on this program, there are conversations around the nominations as presented by the President Buhari to the National Assembly, to the Senate specifically, for confirmation. Now, all of these generated controversies. In fact, some of these matters have gone to court. Now, on uh, the partisan or non-partisan uh, relationship of some of these nominees and with political parties. Tonight, let's get a sense of what really happened. We understand that there were petitions against some of these persons, but what were the, were the basis of these petitions? How did the Senate treat it? And these controversies 
uh, hoping that it will not bedevil the activities or uh, the performance of some of these wrecks as they go into the arrows. I'm being joined tonight by the Senate Chair on INEC, Senator Kabiru Gaya, former governor of uh, Kano State. Thanks so much indeed for coming tonight. Well, thank you very much, and then good evening, Nigerians. <laughs> and I'm being joined by Mr. Ezenwa Nwago, a member of the Board of Yaga Africa, one of those who have spoken up about some of these petitions. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nwago, for joining us good tonight. Good evening, sir. Uh, uh, perhaps I should ask, were you surprised at uh, the confirmation of uh, some of these persons? No, surprise would not be the, the word. Um, concerned will be what I would like to. I, I am concerned. I am concerned because um, the work of civil society is to amplify. Um, there are credible reports, you know, as investigative reports about some of these nominees. And in taking those reports, we amplified them. We took them to the duty bearers, that is the the, the Senate that does the, it's their responsibility actually to investigate uh, or cause for investigation to happen to ascertain that those issues that have been raised uh, are important because the constitution is very clear. It, do, it did not contemplate a situation in which folks who have tainted past, who have partisan inclinations are made to supervise our, you know, uh, election management body. So in, in that clear way, if they go ahead and clear them, uh, what it will raise for us will be concern. It means that uh, we need to be a bit more vigilance, vigilant. We, we will be very careful in ensuring that the gains that have been made, uh, incremental gains that have been made in the electoral process are not reversed uh, through some of these issues. And I think also that, um, there is a sense in which Nigerians have abandoned the issue of reforms to civil society organizations. The opposition political parties also have a responsibility to back up those, you know, uh, uh, those uh, things that were thrown up, not just by civil society, by the media. Mm -hmm. And these things were already in the media. Mm -hmm. but the expectation is that there were also checks, you know, there are institutions of state that should do background checks on these issues. Whether those things happened or not is, right. is not our Because it looks like it's cast in stone now. What we'll be expecting now is for the president to um, swear them into office and for these people, there's 19 of them, four are just returning. Uh, they've spent four years before they're just returning, 17, no, no, uh, about, uh, about 15 of them are, are new. So uh, I'm not sure there's anything anyone can do about it, but let's allow Senator Gaya to speak. Uh, uh, Senator, uh, there were a lot of controversies, which some of which you heard. Um, were you worried? Were you concerned? Because this is not the first time that this is happening. You remember in the case of uh, Loretta Anoche, mm. do you remember the case of uh, Oshun and or your nominees? Yeah. There were people, the questions might raise about the appointment or uh, the nominations of these persons. Uh, but in, in some way, it looks like you had a very swift manner of uh, confirming these people. What really happened? Let me take, tell you that it wasn't easy. And uh, we had 19 nominees. And there are petitions on four of those 19 nominees. Five of them uh, returned by the president for a second term. So therefore, these five nominees went through our screen earlier and they were confirmed by the Senate through the first term. This, they are coming for a second term. Then the other 10 uh, are just new members, mm -hmm. of which none of them, there is any petition on that. There is no petition on any of those uh, 10 people. The remaining four, there are petitions, which we had to look at those petitions uh, critically to see whether they have qualified to remain as members of committee on INEC or or, or we, we screen them out. And this is not the first time this committee of ours screen out some nominees by the president. Uh, you should remember the person is from Ogun State. And then the Loretta issue, that one she was screened out on a different reason, but she was not allowed to be on board of the INEC. So therefore, the, my, myself, my bias, and all the members of the committee, we worked hard seriously. To even We collected petitions. We went through the petitions. I, I could remember in one of the nominees from uh, Benue State, and uh, there were about six petitions on him. 
And that when we go through the petition, they are all having the same so-called proof of evidence. Uh, one, of, one of them is his membership card, uh, where the membership card of that person, purported membership card, say he registered in the political party of PDP, and that he, he registered in 2020. And then his membership card was signed by the current chairman, Ayu, who was not a chairman in 2020. But his membership card was signed by, and his, the photocopy of the membership card was signed by uh, Chairman Ayu, which was not possible. And then the list of the purport also put the names of members of that constituency in one paper. And that list where his name so called appeared, and uh, they even put age and, and uh, town, is written by one individual of all those names. And then they put his age at 40. So we ask him, is this your name and your award? He said these members in the world are not his people. And that his age is 43, and they are putting 40 for him now. So a lot of issues. And we ask him, are you still a member of PDP? He said, no, you are not a member of PDP. But, but Senator, I'm did just, the Senate uh, yeah. committee yeah. In, did uh, or conduct any kind of independent investigation yeah, we did on this person? We did. Uh, on, on all of the four of them, we did. Like the one from Sokoto. He ran for election as for governorship election in 2014 and uh, 2015 precisely, and he lost the primaries. So he lost the primaries. He was he was not happy and uh, like he was frustrated. So he left the the school of of uh, politics and went back to the university to remain as a teacher. Morally speaking, should that kind of person who had already been in the fray before... Yeah, the, the law state that if you are a serving member of a political party, that is the most important part. No, but, he, I mean, he is no, you know the job is yeah, also... Let me explain there, there's a strong moral side of are, that job. No, let me explain. If people are... If, otherwise, we will not have anybody as a member. The law says clearly, if you are a serving member of a political party, and like the last two people we disqualified, one is a member of political party, he accepted that, yeah, he's a member of political party, and he was leading a campaign team of, I can't remember the other person, but that what happened. So for this one, he left the party, and he's no more in the party for five years. It doesn't mean that because he was not in the party for five years now, and he, was, he went back to school as a lecturer, then you cannot disqualify him because he's a member of the party. And then the other one, uh, is it the lady from uh, Anambra? No, no, it's not a Bonyu state. They say she worked as a government staff, uh, a staff of government of uh, a number of state, I mean, uh, a Bonyu state, and he rose the rank of chief of staff. And then she left the office. That doesn't mean that we should not uh, employ her, we should not screen her. Even the government of, uh, of a Bonyu state wrote to recommend her on her job, mm -hmm. on what she did while she was there in service. So that is the, 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 the one on Bonyuka. The other one is the falling from Imo state. Uh, they, are, they are saying that she worked, she worked in INEP before. And that she was be moving from one location to another. They said because he's having, he's having friends in politics, and that's why they have been changing her position from one, one electoral officer in the state to another one. But actually speaking, uh, when we discover her report, we found that she's still okay to run, and all our members agreed to, to maintain her. Yes, uh, to screen her and approve her as the electoral officer, electoral commissioner of the state. So, so uh, Senator, in the minds of the Senate, uh, senators who screen these people, yeah. you are 100% certain that you have done a perfect job? Well, to me, I believe, and to all my colleagues, they even commended our committee for a job well done. And I believe to the, to the best of my ability and to be honest, uh, I swore on the Quran to maintain the the integrity and uh, do a good service for the nation. And that will make, I'll keep in that position to make sure that, yes, I accept and then agree that this report we did is the best of our ability, the correct thing. Mr. Eisen, one more good. Do you want to comment on uh, the, the work that has been done? Some, uh, the senator has summarized the processes and the petitions and the basis. So, Senator, you're saying all of these petitions had no basis. That's why you are to jettison them and screen them. That's summarily what the senator said, isn't yeah. it? Well, Mr. I find it, uh, like I said, it's, it's disturbing, really disturbing that somebody who had contested for governorship of a state in a political party uh, 
has been confirmed by the Senate of the Federal Republic on the basis of the fact that since that person had left that party in five years, that it therefore has no vicarious implication for um, being a resident electoral commissioner just five years after. And the, what is worrying is the fact that the issues that have been raised do not need any, you know, any extension of conversation around whether those nominees. There is one in which even the, she rose to be chief of staff and the government of her state that represents a political interest is going to be appointed into an organization that is supposed to be impartial and neutral in a contest in which possibly even the governor or his aides who wrote those recommendations for her were, are going to be involved in it. I think that in Sokoto, for instance, where that candidate, that, the, that candidate was nominated from, if you even go back to the university, you will find people who have not been in politics, who have not been members of any political party. There is nothing that says that that position is reserved for that individual alone. I think that what should worry us, really, is about perception. Election is very, very deep in perception issues. Once the people feel that there is no level playing ground, is a trigger for violence, the outcomes of elections will be challenged on the basis of that. Now there is a calmness. But as soon as there is any issue around those particular people that we raise the red flag around, you will find out that Nigerians who, pre who now that have been told that, oh, you know, there are no issues, the, there are no substances on those petitions, it can become a trigger for the... Do, do you think, Mr. Wagu, that perhaps, um, Senator, you are a lawmaker, that we need to tinker with our laws on the appointment of these kind of persons, that the appointments are coming from the president's also, I mean, and I'm not saying because the president, sitting president, because the law says it doesn't matter what the, uh, the party is, is the president nominates. So that in itself is a political it is, it nomination is, or appointment. the power of the president to nominate a person to support him running the administration. And even for the INEC chairman and all other members of INEC, it's the president who nominates. The best we could do is to screen to find that those people are capable of doing Senator, this. Senator, you oversee. You, not, you oversee. They are not within. Your, your job is to oversight INEC. Yes. And we look at it. A lot of people have criticized mm. the past of the president to appoint even an INEC chairman. It's a body that's supposed to be independent. Mm. If it's appointed by a political person, mm. how then can you guarantee independence? What, what, what I want you to understand, as long as there is. The, the system or the law says that the president appoints. And even the judiciary is after the judiciary committee recommends them so that the president nominate the, the, the chief judge of the CG and of the federation. But for this INEC issue, the, the people to be nominated are those being nominated by the president. Mm -hmm. And for us to do their check ground, I check ba ba their background and approve. And then before that time, even the police, the SS, all they have to give us a background report on all these nominees. So wait, did you get a security report on we this person? We have security report on all of them. And the, the security report recommended them. Okay, pass all, them. All of them passed them. So we cannot go on screening without a security report. We have even if you feel otherwise? Even if, even if we feel otherwise, even if we want to screen them, we will not do it until all the Show security reports are given. cleared Loretta Noche to appear before the Senate. Or the Senate had to do its due diligence. Yeah, but let and, me tell and, and, you. And, no, no, sir. Just I, we... I didn't. I didn't want to okay. interrupt where you were speaking, so that we can have a good flow. I, the, the Senate committee did not clear on chair for whatever it is that she was not cleared. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, the security agencies had. So you know. So the, the, now these security reports are not available for the public to see. My job and the job of our colleagues in civil society, as people who have relationship, the relationship we have in this matter is one that strengthens the capacity of the independent national election to deliver credible, free, fair, inclusive, and acceptable election, because that has been the challenge. The challenge is to have elections that are acceptable. If you have perception issues, if you have clear issues of partisan pasts, 
tainted past mm -hmm. in the manner in which we have seen them with the these nominees. But the problem is how to prove it. If they wrote the the, 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 what the, proof the, do you so need that the, somebody contested the election? So you know, the reason 20, why I'm, I'm asking this is when, in the issue of law, I mean, you, the, the, the morally law speaking, on you, I mean, one might perceive, and so that's the reason Hitler why operated the on that, Hitler operated on that law. We are talking about the Nigerian no, no, I'm just telling you that laws, the, 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 the people who operate this law, have there should be ethical considerations. And that's why I'm asking, yes, there, that there, could there be a need for us to tinker with our laws in the appointment of these people? Absolutely. If they are supposed absolutely. to be independent and absolutely. a senator, you have that opportunity. Uh, no, if, if not only me, any Nigerian, and you and your colleagues. Any, any Nigerian interested in tinkering with the Constitution or with the Electoral Act, we did that. We before we passed the trial, we did pre, we did public hearings, and I think your group were there to give us opinion on what they want on electoral act amendment. And so many Nigerians contributed to electoral, and this is what we have, and people are happy with the electoral act. So this is part of the process. If some people, if Nigerians want to change this at denying the president for uh, submitting names of nominees for clearance, then it be right. the Nigerians should. So the consequences, of, it the consequences of this ambush. Uh, your, your final thoughts on the, this. The matter. consequences yeah. of this ambush yeah. will be there for all of us to deal with. What we need to do is to begin to create scenarios around these individuals mm -hmm. and ensure that perhaps the reason for which they have been brought into INEC is not allowed to manifest. Right. And that is what civil society should focus its attention. Because really, we have a limit. The oh. limit is for us to do what we have done. No, what, if the what, National what, Assembly feels oh, that no, it, is not, it is not good is enough, then it's fine. It's, it's not good enough because none of this petition is backed by any epidemic. Court. None of the so ab initial it fails. So that one is also important. But we did look at that, but we look at the merits right. and the reasons for the petition, and that's why we acted the way we did. I wish you the very best. Uh, but Senator, you need to come back. Let's talk about the election petition. I mean, election offenses commission. commission yeah. That is very important yeah. going into our election because the idea is that on uh, who's uh, who has obligation to arrest when yeah. there is uh, is it the INX staff or the police? Our laws are very silent on this. Well, election offenses commission, commission is on, very important. It's on the drawing table already. Well, it's been on the drawing table. No, for a while. Already, already the Senate have done their own. Yeah. And it's now left for the House, the House. to concur Con and agree with us. And we hope but it may not be ready before the 2023 election. Ah, no, no, it will be ready before the end of the year. It will be ready. Yeah, we are working on that. That will be good. Senator, yeah. good we, news we that I've heard tonight. We won't use it. We won't use it for the, this 2023 right. election. Thank you. So, good news that you have given me tonight. I need good to good give you a handshake. Thank you if it's for, ready, thank you uh, for please come back. Nigeria. Let us talk about no, it. No, we will. We it will, will be very important we to do that. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank for coming. Senator Kabiru Gaya, the Senate Chair on INEC. Thank you so much indeed for coming. Thank you too. Thank you. But that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye bye.